Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a very, very exciting video. This is my deep dive into the author Ruby Dixon. <laughs> Hi everyone, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ava and I absolutely love alien romances, specifically the queen herself, Ruby Dixon. I have a lot of her books. I think she is the author that I own the most books from. She normally takes up this entire shelf right here, so I had to put something random there to fill in the space. They're all sitting right here next to me. So um, I'm very, very, very excited about this video. I've been wanting to do this video for years and I have read her entire backlist. I wanted to wait until I read her entire backlist. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very excited for this video and just to gab about one of my favorite authors of all time. So let's get into Rubyverse, if we shall. According to Goodreads, Ruby has one, about 130 works published. However, they might also be in other languages too. Let's just say she has a lot of books, a lot of books like about half of her works are in the world of Ice Planet Barbarians. Like, she's written a lot. Ruby writes primarily alien romance, but she has other books and other genres. So if alien romance is not your vibe, do not fret. She has contemporary, she has fantasy, she has post-apocalyptic. Like, she has a lot of things that you could pick up. I believe every single one of her books are on Kindle Unlimited, um, except for one. <laughs> which we're going to talk about later, 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 okay? She also has fantastic audiobooks. I love how she prioritizes audios for the majority of her books. She's slowly but surely producing audiobooks for all of her books. Especially her new releases, she makes sure to have an audiobook with her new full-length book releases. Not published at the same time, but she makes it a goal to have an audiobook with it no matter what. Which I know is a lot for indie authors, so I... I absolutely love her for that as someone who reads primarily on audio and her audiobooks slap. They are so good. She makes sure to hire like the best audiobook narrators. They are fantastic. The man who voices, I cannot think of his name right now. The man who voices the heroes in the IPB books. I could listen to his voice for hours. <laughs> Almost every single one of her books you are able to buy physically. There are some novellas and title, backlist titles here and there that don't have physical copies. So I'm slowly growing my collection. I did not count beforehand to see how many I have, but um, I have quite a few. It fills up almost an entire shelf. So um, I am in love with my collection and I love seeing it grow because her books to me are like beautiful. Okay, I own at least one book, almost one book from every single one of her series, except her Shifter series and her Motorcycle Club series. Okay, we're gonna get into those series in a second, um, but I wanted to show off the new editions of Ice Planet Barbarians. This is probably what a lot of people are seeing right now, especially in Barnes and Noble or actual bookstore bookstores um, because these books were picked up by a publisher and so they're getting republish and revamped and everything and each book also has like a little extra bonus scene in the back too some of them do um i believe books one through five right now are out as a uh, new covers i only have one through four i am collecting the new editions along with the old editions the old editions of the new editions aren't in print anymore i am a little bit sad that i have not collected um the og covers for um these two i don't have the og covers for barbarian alien and i don't have the og cover for barbarian lover book two and book three and i also don't have the original cover for barbarian's mate which is book six which already got taken off of amazon because they're in the works of making a new cover for it so i'm a little sad but i prioritized and made sure to get all of the rest of them most of them the old versions already so if you have an extra copy of books two three or six like of the old editions and you want to sell it to me, DM me on Instagram, please. I'd be very gracious. It's okay if not. I'm just putting it out there. Anyway, I'm really excited to talk about these books. I um, bought a few of these books <laughs> recently, a few of these books recently um, to prepare for a book bonanza because I'm going to be meeting Ruby in a few weeks and I'm just so excited. I get to like meet her in person. <laughs> like I'll be going straight to her table right there, day one, right, I'm, I'm doing it. 
So um, I'm super excited to finally meet Ruby. I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying too. And I'm gonna be bringing all of these books to sign by her. So all of these books will be signed. I am so, so, so excited. I need to like chill out. <laughs> I also would love to mention that in my Goodreads, reviews for these books. I make sure to put the trigger warnings in all of these books um, in my reviews. And Ruby is doing an amazing job at putting a content warning page at the beginning of every single one of her books, like her newer releases. I don't know if she's gone back to her older releases and added those pages, but I know for about the past three years, she has been putting content warnings at the beginning of every single one of her books in case you would like to know the trigger warnings. So let's get into the actual books, okay? I recommend reading her books mainly in publication order if we're going by series here. I have kind of sections of this video I want to go by. So first section is her Ice Planet Barbarian universe. You have three major series in that universe and I, re I recommend reading all those books in publication order regardless of series. And then the next part of the video is going to be um, talking about her other alien romance books that are not involved with IPB that I also recommend you reading in publication order. I'll be getting to that. And then the other chunk of this video is going to be about her series, her other series and standalones that have nothing to do with other aliens or the IPB world. Okay? Let's get started. So obviously we have to mention the Ice Planet Barbarian universe. I recommend reading these three series in publication order, which is Ice Planet Barbarians, obviously this main series. And then you also have the Ice Home series. The first book in that series is Lawrence Barbarian. And then Ruby's newest series that also takes place on the same planet that the other two books not books, sorry, series do, is the Ice Planet Clone series, which is the next spinoff series. Okay, so these are the first books in all the series. You have Ice Planet Barbarians, Lawrence Barbarian, and Arjal's Residence. These are all three books, first books in the three series that I mentioned. These books need to be read in publication order. Okay, you can do whatever you want. I'm not the reading police, obviously. Just my recommendation after reading the series all these series multiple times besides this one because this one's a new release um that i recommend reading them all in publication order it makes sense i first started my alien romance journey by reading this book this is a spinoff to ice planet barbarians and i was very lost i was lost it was fun it was a good read i enjoyed my time but i enjoyed it so much better the second time around after i read this series first like the way you're supposed to. I do have an Ice Planet Barbarian universe guide video where I break down every single book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series and the Ice Home series. I have that linked down below for you. I break down every single book and the recommended order that you should read it in based on my opinion. Again, I'm not the reading police. You can read these books however you want. Based off of my personal opinion, I think the way that I listed those books in that video, great way to read these books. You're getting more bang for your buck if you read them in order. It's because when Ruby was writing these books, she was interchanging between these two series because they coincide with each other. Something will happen in this series that will affect the characters in this series, but the next book in the series doesn't deep dive into that occurrence that happens in this book. You know what I mean? So like it flip flops back and forth because that's the way Ruby wrote the books. Also in that video, I talk about my favorites in both of these series, but I've made something. If you do not want to watch a whole entire video, I do not blame you if uh, you're not as big as the IPB fan as me and you just want to know the order. You just want to know it. Like who's going to tell me how to read the books and what order to read them? I actually made a graphic for you and I'm very excited about this graphic. I will pop it on the screen right now. Um, this is my recommended reading order for the Ice Planet Barbarian verse. There's also a key along with this graphic describing some of the things and what the stars mean and everything. Um, and this graphic will be posted on my Instagram today. So you can go check that out if you would like, if you want to screenshot it, whatever you want to do. I made this graphic for y'all so you know how to read the books, what order to read them, because like I'm, I get a lot of people asking me which books should I read at what point. And so I feel like making a graphic like this would have been beneficial for everybody. So I'm not going to be going in depth into these three series. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> I have a dedicated video for Arjal's Residence by Ruby Dixon. I have a whole entire video reading this book. And then I have my whole entire deep dive video for these two series. So you can go check out 
that video if you want more information and this video if you want more information about this one. Also look at this back, stunning. I've already talked about all of these books. This video would be like two hours long if I talked about these two series again. I've already done it. So now we're gonna be getting into Ruby's other books. I love IPB if you couldn't tell. So like go read them if you haven't yet. Um, but if IPB is not your speed, do not worry. I have other Ruby books that I'll be recommending right now. Pause, I forgot to mention too. There are some things in that video that I did not mention or I hadn't read yet. So I'm gonna touch on those really fast. So first, um, there now is a collection of all of the honeymoon novellas um, that you can get in a bind up, in this bind up. Um, that exists now. And I think also in like the newer editions, they're at the back of the book, if I'm not mistaken, of like the new editions of the books, because the four honeymoon novellas are only for the first four books in the series. So, And then I also didn't mention in that video that there is another collection of novellas. This is Slices of Life. This is a collection of four novellas. Um, this is Having the Barbarian's Baby, Ice Ice Baby's Calm and Aftershocks. So you can find all four of those in this anthology. And then if you saw my graphic that I posted, I have little star icons on there with some numbers on the top. And that is because those are indicators of very, 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 very short novellas that you can go find on Ruby's Facebook page and her website. Um, they're literally, all of them are under 20 page novellas. They're very short, but I love anything IPB-esque. And so if you're like me and you love other IPB things, you can go check out those stories there. So number 13.1, in this series is uh, Bedtime Stories, which is Rukar's story. He is a kid, a part of the tribe, Harlow and Rook's kid. This is about Rook telling his son Rukar a bedtime story about how he met Har how he grew up and then how he met Harlow and she became his mate. It's really sweet. Then number 15.1 is Bedtime Stories, which is Joden's story. Ruby wrote three like bedtime stories for these kids. So uh, Joden is the child I think it's son, son to Josie and Hayden. It's about Josie and Hayden putting their kids to bed. Okay. And then 16.1 is Bedtime Stories, Tally's story. And this is Georgie and Vectal's daughter. Georgie trying to get Tally to go to bed, basically. It's telling her a story. Okay. They're all three bedtime story books. Okay. I really liked them. Probably my favorite little short novella is A Gift for Drennel, which is book number 16.25. And this is a little story about Drennel, who is the tribe grump basically he is old and crabby and reclusive and no one hangs out with him he is grumpy he's like he's like that old man that's like get off my lawn like he doesn't vibe well with anyone <laughs> so um this is about young Lutki becoming his friend so he's one of the kids in the tribe becoming his friend and it was so cute i remember in my original um ice planet barbarian deep dive video that i remember being like where can i find this novella i can't find it anywhere and luckily one of my friends dm to me and was like you gotta find it on her website or her facebook group or something and i was like great loved it. I read it like immediately. Then you have another novella in the Ice Pen Barbarian series. This one's called A Gift and it takes place after this sh little short novella. Okay. This is The Barbarian Before Christmas. And this one's about Beck and Ellie, like during Christmas time, mainly about them, which is my favorite couple in the IPB universe, if you didn't know. So this one's about like uh, Claire, Georgie, Asha, um, making Ellie like feel welcome in the tribe. And so they uh, make her some gifts. Beck and Ellie are like my favorite couple. So I really enjoyed this novella. And then the gift too. This one doesn't have a cover. There is a short novella, a part of the Ice Home series. All the ones that I've mentioned are a part of IPB. This one is part of the Ice Home series. This is book number 9.5 in the series, which is Twas the Night Before No Poison Day. <laughs> this one's about Lauren and her perspective of Christmas time on the Ice Home Beach. Lauren is the heroine from book one on the Ice Home series. So um, it's really cute and really sweet. And then the last one I have to mention is Josie's Wish, which is actually the last work in the IPB main series. This is 19.5 and um, it's just about Josie during Christmas time and uh, I love when Ruby writes these like short little Christmas novellas. It puts me in an amazing mood. <laughs> Josie has a specific wish that she wants for Christmas and it may or may not come true in this little novella and I thought it was a great little wrap bow wrap to the end of a fantastic series. Before we get on to Ruby's other books I do want to mention that the Ice Planet Barbarian series is completely finished. She's done writing in it. And the Ice Home series is completely done and finished as well. So she will not be revisiting 
those series specifically, but that opens doors to spin-off series that she will write. She is currently writing in the Ice Planet Clone series, which takes place on the same planet, and those characters that we love from the Ice Planet Barbarian series and the Ice Home series will pop up in the Ice Planet Clone series. And then later on in the video, I will talk about other books she plans on writing possibly in this universe and this world. Next chunk of this video, I'm going to be talking about other alien romance books that Ruby has written that I think should be all read together in publication order, even though they're from different series. I think we have four series here, but I think they need to be read all in publication order because Ruby loves to interconnect all of her books. She just does. The four series that I think you should read a publication order are the Rizdiverse series, the Corsair series, the Corsair Brothers series, which yes, is a different series to the Corsair series, and then the Villains in Love series. So I have another graphic for you that I made for uh, her other alien romance works that I think you should read a publication order. So here is that graphic that you can look at. Um, it will also be posted on Instagram. And the key to this will be listed on Instagram as well with this main graphic. So I hope this was helpful for y'all, this graphic. I really liked making it. I loved making these. So um, I'm going to be deep diving into every single one of these books for you because I can't wait to just talk about them, okay? Um, so I'm going to be breaking down each book in the series in order. Remember what I'm about to say, the series that I'm about to talk about, this is not the publication order. Like this is not the order you should read the books. You should follow the graphic that I made. Right now I'm just gonna be breaking down each book based off of series, if that makes sense. You can read it however you want, again, but to get more bang for your buck, to know who the side characters are throughout all these books, I recommend reading them in publication order based off of the graphic that I have. So let's get into the first series that I mentioned, which is the Rizdiverse series. There are 11 main books in this series and three side novellas. So the series does have long books, like a long chunky books, and it also has little novellas. The majority of them take place on a planet called Rizda 3, which is a refugee planet filled with humans who own farms. So basically in this universe, um, humans are taken from Earth a lot to be alien slaves for various reasons. You read about in one of the novellas, like I think book number 0.75, you read about this alien, I'll get into that book in a second, but you read about this alien who woos an, a, a human woman and saves her from slavery and realizes like he's he's very rich so he wants to create this refugee planet for human women who were also kidnapped who cannot go back to earth now like it's illegal for them to go back to earth for them to find solace and start their lives up again and have life's purpose so um each woman on Rizzo 3 that are refugees end up being gifted a farm to farm on for whatever they want and yeah I love alien romances that dealing with farm stuff. Not all of them are farm ones, so just be aware of that. But, um, and farming doesn't really have a lot to do with these books. They just take place on a cabin on a farm. All of these books are on Kindle Unlimited and some of them do have audiobooks, but not all of them. So I'll tell you which ones have audios and which don't. The first book that you should read a part of this series is actually a prequel. I have three books to mention before you get to the actual first book in the series. So book number 0.25 is Prison Planet Barbarian. This one is very interesting. It's like our hero and heroine, Jatari and Chloe end up uh, meeting on an alien prison planet and end up escaping together. So fun. This one is on audio if you'd love to check it out. Oh, one of my favorites is book number 0.5, which is The Alien's Mail Order Bride. This one is about Envor and Nicole, and it's a mail order bride situation on a farm. He mail order brides someone from his same alien species, and she shows up in disguise as like, like a hologram mask on. When she takes it off, he realizes, oh, she's a human woman. This is not the, the bride I ordered. <laughs> And so she has to like convince him that she wants to stay and help him run his farm. Then the book that I was talking about earlier with like the rich alien who finds a human and then marries her and wants to make this planet for refugees is the book Pretty Human. This one's about Millie and Lord Varin. He's a very rich, okay. Um, and yeah, he saves her from being a human slave. Okay, the actual first book in this series is book number one, When She's Ready. This one is about Leilani and Tessier. This is a marriage of convenience romance and you can actually listen to this audiobook for free if you go to like the podcast app and listen to it on the Read Me Romance podcast. So it's free to listen to. If you wanna go listen to Ruby Dixon book, you can totally go check this one out. Another marriage of convenience one is When She's Married. This one's about Vortigar and Piper. Then book number three is When She Purrs. This is about Kim and Nasakith. Some of these alien names are very hard to pronounce if you did not know. <laughs> so Kim in here owns one of the farms on this refugee planet and she's being courted by 
Apraxian, which is the alien species that our hero is from, which is like part cat, part other alien species. Anyway, um, he's like a giant cat dude, okay? <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's fine. It is fine. And um, like the way that he courts women, a part of his people, is not the same way humans are courted. And so she's kind of scared at first because he's like crawling around her place, um, but he's actually courting her and she has no clue. <laughs> it's very funny. This one does have an audiobook if you're interested. And book number four is When She Belongs. I love this book so much. This one's about Sophie and Jurok. Jurok the Jerk. This is a grumpy sunshine romance. And Force Proximity, they're stuck on this zippy ended asteroid together and he just hates people and she loves everybody. This one does have an audiobook as well. I really recommend it. It's so good. Book number five is When She Dances. This one's about Zakor and Tessa. So Zakor lives on this planet and he ends up up across Tessa who is dancing in a window with like a chain around her ankle and he realizes that she's a slave dancing in this club and he buys her to save her. This one also has an audiobook. When She's Bold is the next one, book number six. This one's about Lucy and Rektar. Lucy and here's a human woman who lives on Rista 3 and she loves baking and she most importantly loves Rektar. He's one of the aliens tasked to protect humans on this planet and she comes into his office almost every single day to bring him baked goods and to flirt with him and everything's just going right over his head. He does not get it whatsoever until like his friends poke him and are like, uh, she's into you. And he cannot believe that this goddess of a woman is in love with him. But she, she totally is. But number seven is when she's lonely. You can see the difference. Uh, when she belongs was like this thick and when she's lonely is this thin. So like these books fluctuate in their length. So just be aware of that. Um, this one's about Ashley and Kex. Um, my heroine in here is very gruff and grumpy, but she is hard of hearing and has had to pretend that she is able to hear um, because when she was first taken as a slave, people, aliens, humans were killed if they were not perfect. And so she has to pretend to be able to hear. And some people think she's rude because she ignores them, but she's not ignoring them. She just can't hear them. So this is uh, her like kind of like friends to lovers romance with Kex. When She's Pregnant is book number nine. This one's a funny one. So it's about Naomi who's trying to get pregnant. And so she goes to like the alien protectors on the planet and is like, you sir at the front counter, get me pregnant. I want a baby now. <laughs> it's really funny. This one is on audio as well. The next book is When She's Mary. Um, this one's about Sinaf and Devin. This one's a holiday read that I absolutely loved. Then the last two books are two of Ruby's most recent releases. Book number 10 in the series is When She's Fearless. This one's about Chelsea and Harusek. Cannot pronounce it, I'm sorry. Um, this is like a hookup romance to more. And then book number 11, I literally finished this like yesterday. This is When She's Weary. This one's about Jeru and Tabitha. This one's about like a strong heroine who was taken as a slave, escapes enslavement, basically puts booby traps all around her home. And it's kind of like that situation where she tries to like hurt or kill the hero to protect herself and the hero just falls more in love with her because like he was just trying to talk to her. <laughs> but he loves how strong and capable she is. So I adore this one. So those are all of the books in the series. Um, there is a Rizdiverse tail bind up if you want that bind up. I'm getting that bind up when I go to Book Bonanza in a few weeks. Um, so it's a bind up of four of the novellas that I mentioned. So uh, The Aliens Mail Order Bride, book number 0.5, book number 0.75, which is Pretty Human, book number two in the series, When She's Mary, and book number six, When She's Bold. All of them are in this bind up, if you would like the bind up. I do know that there are people out there who don't like novellas on their shelf. So I feel like buying these bind ups would be beneficial for like aesthetic reasons, if you want that. Okay, so I'm also gonna talk about my favorite books in every series that I'm gonna mention. So um, I have to talk about my favorite books in this series. I'm normally just gonna go with my one favorite or my top three whenever I'm talking about these series. I couldn't pick just three. Okay, I picked, I picked four. <laughs> this one might be my all time favorite Ruby Dixon book ever. So I have to mention it. This is When She Belongs. I love this one so much. If you're gonna read any Ruby book to like read these books in order just to get to this one, do it. It is so good. Like Sophie and Jurok are everything. I want to review this book like right now. The Aliens Mail Order Bride is another one of my favorites. It's a short little novella, the one about um, like her pretending to be a, hu a alien in order to become a mail order bride. Um, it's really fun. It like was the book that kickstarted my love for alien romances that take place on farms. <laughs> like I love that. When She's Mary is like the Christmas one. 
I absolutely loved this. I gave this book five stars and it's like a short little funny novella. The heroine literally has like this alien rodent that's like her pet that she dresses in Christmas sweaters. And it's about her and the hero um, making the like old human woman who lives on the planet that's her neighbor like to cheer her up for Christmas time. And it is so cute. And then the fourth one that I just have to mention is When She's Lonely. I love the dynamic in this one. I just love it. The hero is so caring and sweet, but there's also like this funny aspect of like him kind of blackmailing her, but kind of not. It's so good. Okay, we're done with the Ristover series. Now we're gonna be getting into the Corsair series. So this series has four books. All of them are on KU and all of them also have audiobooks. These books are about four friends who are more like brothers traveling through space. They're all space pirates. Many of the books, if not all of the books are about these men like rescuing human women who are slaves and falling in love with one of the women. The first book in the series is The Corsair's Captive. This one is about Fran and Kivian. He rescues her from captivity. He in here is really funny. He loves dressing to impress. So he was just like everything to me. I loved him. Book number two is In the Corsair's Bed, which is about Kat and Tarek. Um, another situation where he rescues her from captivity. I do want to mention that this is my physical copy of the next book. This is Enticed by the Corsair, which is book number three. They are pretty short. Um, so if you want a short, quick alien read, you could totally read these ones. Um, but this one is about Iris and Alivos. He rescues her um, from captivity. She's like the sole survivor of this spaceship where humans were being tortured. They actually tortured this woman for running here um, and took her eyes out of her head. So um, she is not able to see anymore. And so he's trying to help her with um, her disability now and how to get around um, with the inability to see. And I just adore this one. You can see Iris just growing as a person and Oliva's just helping this woman and I I love him so much. He's so caring. Book number four, the last book in this series is Deceiving the Corsair. This is about Centaur and Zoe. So this is a romance where the two of them fall in love with each other without seeing one another. They fall in love over like voice chats. They're both the like pilots of the spaceship. So they like drive it around basically. And so they're in like the cockpit a lot. I think that's what they're called. I don't know, it's spaceships. Um, they're in like the area with the controls all day long for their own respective spaceships. Centaur this whole time thinks he's talking to another Masaka, which is his alien species um, person, but Zoe's actually a human woman. And um, they are falling in love with each other over voice comms and they end up meeting each other in person and things go from there. So my favorite in the series. It's this one, I really love it. So uh, yeah, those are the four books a part of the Corsair series. Next, I have to mention the Corsair Brothers series. Okay, so the last book that I talked about, Deceiving the Corsair, um, Zoe in that one, the human woman who falls in love over voice comms or whatever, she is actually a human woman who was rescued by these three alien men who are all brothers. They're all blood related brothers. They saved her when she was a little girl from slavery. She's their sister now. Like she grew up in the spaceship, everything she ever since she was like eight or something. She's now way into adulthood now. Um, and so this is about those three brothers. This series is. This series has five books in it and one short novella that can be found on Ruby's website. These are her longer books for sure. This is book number one in the series. It's quite thicker compared to this one, obviously. I do wanna reiterate that it is important, in my opinion, to read these books in publication order because you met these brothers in the last book in the Corsair series. However, they are also a heavy hand in this book, which is a Rizniverse book. It has nothing to do with these two series that I'm talking about right now. So that's why I recommend reading them in order. They are a major part of this book as well. So anyway, so I know there's five books in the series, but there's only three brothers. Um, it's because one of the books in the series is about one of the guys that come across named Strake and a woman that appears in all of Rubyverse. Her name is Bethia. All these books kind of overlap in timeline after book one that does not spark book two, you know? So like this is book one and book two like starts maybe halfway through this one, if that makes sense. So um, they're interlapping with time. All these books are in KU and books one through three so far have audiobooks. The series starts out with these three brothers um, going on a journey to find this long lost space treasure. And when they get to the long lost spaceship that the treasure's on, um, they figure out that the treasure isn't treasure treasure, like physical, like coins or anything. Like it's human slaves. There are human slaves on the ship, like left alone. And when they board the ship to figure out what's going on, because they do not support slavery whatsoever, um, these human women think that they're out to kill them or take them into slavery again. So they may or may not like 
lure them into a room on the spaceship and knock them out with like knockout gas <laughs> and tie them up that way. That's how this one starts, Adoran, the first book in the series about Jade and Adoran. And while he's blacking out from said gas, he's looking at Jade through this window and is like, that woman's gonna be mine. This woman is mine. I love this one so much. Their dynamic in here is everything to me. She's more of the grumpy one and he is definitely the more golden retriever sunshine type. Second one in the series is Caspar. This one's about Caspar and Alice. And this one is part partly a survival romance. So I love survival romances. The third book in the series is Strake. This is the romance between Strake and Ruth. Um, and this one is very much enemies to lovers. Then book number 3.5 is a little novella that you can find on Ruby's website. This is Corsair Brother Yule. This is a short little Christmas novella, takes place during Christmas time about all of the characters in this series celebrating Christmas. Then book number four is Mathiris. This one's about Mathiris and Helen. You've read about these two characters throughout the whole entire series and you've been waiting on their book for forever. Uh, and Helen is like a clone, an Ani clone. So she's not human. So if you wanna read about an alien who's not human, there you go. Um, the audiobook for this one is releasing in July of 2023, so it'll be out fairly soon. Then book number five is one of Ruby's 2023 releases. This is Bethia. This is actually Ruby's first ever FFM romance. I'm super excited to read this one. This is one of the few books that I've not read yet by Ruby. I haven't read this one yet because I'm waiting on the audiobook. These books are so long. They're like over 400 pages and I need the audiobooks to help me get through them and just I love them way more when they're on audio I just do so this one's about Bathia, Dora and Jareth and I don't know anything else because I haven't read this one yet so I'm excited for whenever the audiobook comes out I'm probably gonna have to wait like a year for this audiobook but it's fine it's okay Bathia is a character that we've seen pop up throughout like a lot of Ruby's books like the Rizidiverse series the Corsair series the Corsair brother series like Bathia is like a constant character in Rubyverse so I'm very excited that she's getting her own romance. My favorite book in this series is definitely Adoran. It's the start to it all. I just love him and Jade like so much and also look at this man. Just look he's even dripping with sweat. <laughs> I love this. Okay and then the last series that I have to mention a part of this grouping of other alien romances to be read in publication order are the two books a part of the Villains in Love series. Both of these books are on Kindle Unlimited and both of them do have audiobooks. This series is actually a collaboration with Katie Wilde and Ella Good, which you will see later on in this video, that Ruby actually collabs a lot with Ella Good, Katie Wilde, and Alexa Riley. Like they write a lot in the same like interconnected series that have nothing to do with each other. They just have the same like prompt basically. All these authors wanted to write about villains falling in love. Ruby's books have nothing to do with Katie Wilde's books in this series and have nothing to do with Ella Good's books in this series. Katie Wilde's books are fantasy romance books and Ruby's are aliens. So like they have nothing to do with each other. They just involve the same theme, if that makes sense. So they're all about villains falling in love. So these two books in the series are about clones of a very evil gladiator alien named Cruelden. So it's about the clones of Cruelden. Cloning is something that's happening in a lot of Ruby's later books. You have the Ice Planet clone series. There's cloning talked about a lot in these books. So um, cloning is a big thing up and coming in Ruby's brain. <laughs> so the first book in that series is Bad Guy. This one's about Mina and Cruelden. This Cruelden in here is um, locked up in this cell and um, Mina is a human slave on this space station and her job is to clean out cells. And Cruelden is so like, mean and frustrated with the situation so he like rips up everything out of his cell he tears the sink out of the wall like it's not a pretty sight and so <laughs> mean is there to go clean up his mess basically almost every single day and the first time she does it he has these cuffs on his wrists and ankles that like stick him to the wall no matter how strong he is like he cannot get off the wall and mina like goes in while he's stuck to the wall and cleans up his mess and it's like this tiny little human girl's like you better stop basically like i'm done cleaning up your mess and so he makes a mess in his cell every day to see this human woman like every day <laughs> i love this one and then the second book in the series is worst guy also about a cruelden and b so he's locked up and she has been hired to basically be befriend him um and that's all i can say about that one i don't want to spoil it but i enjoyed this one as well this one i will say is my favorite out of the two so i will just mention that now we're done with the alien romance books that need to be read in publication order with other series okay we're now just going to be talking about series the other series that ruby has that could just be read in order like a normal series can be <laughs> don't get me wrong i love ruby's interconnected series but it does cause some confusion for people so i don't blame them for like asking can I read this book as a standalone? Can I not? Um, these series, all these series can be read in order as a series 
alone, if that makes sense. Yeah. The other series that I have to mention is, of course, the Fireblood Dragon series by Ruby Dixon. Either people love the IPB series or they love the Fireblood Dragon series. Okay, I love both of them. Or you're like me who loves both of them. So if IPB is not your speed, check out the Fireblood Dragon series. Uh, this series has 10 books. All of them are on KU and all of them have audiobooks. This is a post-apocalyptic romance series dealing with dragon shifters. These dragon shifters just so happen to also be aliens. They are Draconi aliens. They come from a different planet. Um, you don't have any time in any of these books where you get to like go to their planet or whatsoever. All of them happen on Earth in post-apocalyptic Earth. Every single one of these books are filled with dragon shifters. Um, and there are a lot of language barriers. A lot of these books have language barriers in it because dragons speak telepathy, telepathy, with telepathy. They speak mind to mind, like dragon shifters don't speak out loud. And so they don't really know how to talk to humans at first. Let me pause for a second and go backwards. So this book series has like a little preamble to it. So um, basically this is about earth in post-apocalyptic time because all of a sudden one day a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through the earth and laying fire to everything. It is years later after that first occurrence, dragon shifters still are here on earth. Um, no one knows what dragon shifters though. They just think they're dragons. Um, you have the orange gold dragons that are male dragons and the red dragons who are female dragons. Anyway, so um, when it comes to humans, there are a few human survivor camps here and there. It's very post-apocalyptic-esque. And this series does get dark at times because you have women trying to survive in this very male-dominated post-apocalyptic setting. And some of them have to use their body in order to get food or just find a place to sleep at night or to not get sick from a plague. So be aware of trigger warnings. Again, Ruby makes sure to put trigger warnings in her books. Book number one, Fire in His Blood, you get to know all of this information, this background information. Body in here is taken by one of the main guys in the camp that she's in and basically offered up as a, on a silver platter to this dragon for the dragon to take her so the dragon can like leave their camp alone. Um, what she doesn't know is that when she's taken, he actually shifts into a humanoid form and he claims that they're mates, but they cannot communicate because there's this language barrier. Again, these dragons don't verbally talk out loud. And the only way these dragon creatures can communicate with their humans or their mates is to give them their fire, is to bite them and inject them with Draconi venom. And that's basically the mating bite. They can't do that with any other person and yeah. So that's basically the premise of a lot of these books is them trying to get to know and understand these human women that are either given to them or that they pick out themselves, basically, like they find their fate to make themselves. I recommend you read all these books in order because there is a background plot happening with all of the books in the series. Like there's this major occurrence happening in the background. This series is complete, by the way. There's 10 books in this series and she's done writing in this series. I hope that one day she does a second generation series because I would love that personally. Um, but we have not gotten any hint about that yet. I've already talked about book one, Fire in His Blood. It's about Claudia and Kale. Um, Kyle, Kyle, I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> but this was a great start to the series. Book number two is Fire in His Kiss, which is about Sasha and Doc. Book number three is Fire in His Embrace, which is about Emma and Zor. Book number uh, four is Fire in His Fury, which is about Amy and Rast. Book number five is Fire in His Spirit, which is about Gwen and Van. Also, sorry, I'm not really talking about the premises for this because they kind of follow a lot of the same premise like I talked about before you know book number six is fire in his veins which is by Andrea and Liam this one's interesting different than all the rest because he's disguising and pretending to be a human so he already verbally talks out loud um so it's very interesting book number seven is fire in her eyes which is about Teva and Gabe this is the only romance in this series um where the dragon is a woman and the human is a man. Book number eight is Fire in His Chaos. This one's about um, Rachel and Jurek. I really enjoyed this one for the disability rep. The heroine in here became an amputee after the main invasion of the dragons because I think a, a building collapsed on her and she ended up uh, becoming heavily scarred and lost one of her hands. Um, and I just love seeing her make her way in the world um, with her disability. Like, it's so good. I love this one. Um, then number nine is Fire in Her Dreams, which is about Jenny and Mal. And then the final book, book number 10, is Dark Fire about Melina and Azar. And if you've read all the other books in the series, Azar is actually the main villain in this entire series. And so you get like an actual villain romance from Ruby Dixon. Ruby writes a lot of like sweet golden retriever heroes. 
So it's very interesting reading about a villain. My top three favorite books, a part of the series. Uh, Fire in Her Eyes is my number one. I love this one. Uh, Fire in His Blood, book number one, is really good to me. And then Fire in His Chaos is another favorite of mine as well. We're going to be getting into another Ruby Dixon series. This is the Aspect and Anchor series, which is her fantasy romance series. I love these books so much and not a lot of people know that Ruby Dixon writes fantasy romance but her fantasy romance books slapped me. Like I love them so much. There are two novellas in the series and three main books that are chunky monkey books. They're like 600 page books. Okay, which is very different because Ruby writes a lot of shorter books. There are audiobooks for all of them, including the novellas and all of them are on Kindle Unlimited. Again, these are fantasy romance books and sh I think should be read in order. At least the three main books in the series, like the 600 page books. The two novellas, I have them right here, I think you can read them as standalones like they have nothing to do with the main plot in the book i think the couple from this one pops up in book one in the series but like you can you can definitely read these as standalones one of the reasons why i recommend reading the like three main 600 page books in order even though they're about different couples is because book one does a lot of world building to set you up for the other books in the series like i can't even describe it. there's so much going on in book one that really benefits the other two books if you read book one at first. Again, the main books in the series are quite long, but they're also slow burn. So you're getting what you're getting, except for number three. Number three is not slow burn. It's like fast paced right then and there, right at chapter two, like they're doing stuff. Book number 0.5 in the series is The King's Spinster Bride. Uh, this is the old cover and then this one's the new cover. I don't own a new cover version yet, um, but this one's about Matthew and Hala. This is an age gap romance and uh, deals with royalty. It's a little novella. You have a worshiping hero. This book is also an Audible Plus. If you have Audible right now, you can listen to this book for free. It's one of my favorite Ruby books ever. I love it so much. When it comes to the main books in the series, the three main books, the Chunky Monkey books, um, there is a main plot line, a similar plot line about human women in our day and age from Earth on our plane, um, getting sucked through a portal into a fantasy world and then becoming the human anchors to gods who have been cast down from the Earth. Okay, so in book number one, Bounce of the Battle God, Faith in here is sucked from Earth and gets put on this fantasy romance plane, this fantasy plane, <laughs> and uh, ends up becoming the human anchor to Aaron, who is a battle god. He's quite arrogant and grumpy, okay? Um, this is a road trip romance. It's opposites tracked, broody hero, and fantastic banter. Book number two is Sworn to the Shadow God. You have another human woman who's been sucked from Earth and put on this fantasy world and becomes the human anchor to basically this fantasy world's version of Hades. You just gotta mention Hades and I'm a sucker. Then book number three is a little bit different. It's about one of these gods being sucked into our world. And our human woman, um, Carly, ends up finding Kassam, the, the guy. And he's kind of like the god of like, sex, you know? <laughs> and so you see all these people like flocked in because he has this aura to him because of his godly ability. So yeah, this is the one that starts out very, very in your face chapter two doing stuff and the other two books are very slow, slow, slow burn. And then book number 3.5 is The Half Orcs Maiden Bride. Again, this one can be read as a standalone, but it has a lot of the same marriage customs that are in this little novella. That's why I really recommend at least these two novellas that you read. This one's about Yolanthe and Agacor, and both of these people come from the fantasy world. He is an orc and she is wanting a husband really badly. Her dad ends up finding her husband and she's not like expecting when she goes to go marry this guy uh, that it's an orc. It's arranged marriage. There are fantastic wedding rituals in here. Love this one. My top three for this series, definitely these two novellas, favorites, and then book one in the series, Bounce the Battle God my third favorite for sure. I do want to mention Ruby is still writing books in the series. So this series is not complete yet. She's still writing other books. And I'll talk about those towards the end of the video for her upcoming releases section. Then we're getting into the two series by Ruby that she is like done with. She's never going to write in them again. Um, the first one is the Bedlam Butcher series, which is her motorcycle club romance series. I bet you didn't know she had a motorcycle club romance series, but she does. The Bedlam Butcher series is a series uh, that Ruby added to for a collection of motorcycle club romances. So again, this is another contribution of many authors writing in the series, but the author's works have nothing to do with each other. So you have Ella Good, Katie Wilde, and Alexa Riley. Alexa Riley is banned on Amazon, so her books will not pop up on Amazon if you're trying to find them. But like Ella Good's books have nothing to do with Katie Wilde's books and have nothing to do with Ruby's books. Like they do not overlap like 
at all. They're just all motorcycle club romances. On Amazon, if you look at the series that these books take place in, it says there's 20 books in the series. That is wrong. That's like all of the authors works. All four of those authors, all the books together equal 20 books. Ruby's contribution, the Bedlam Butcher series, has seven books. All of them are on Kindle Unlimited and are also in a bundled box set, but only on KU. They do not come in bundled box sets, box sets. Um, as physical copies. And actually only a select few have physical copies, paperback copies, um, so not all of them you would be able to add to your collection. This series has novellas and also full-length books, and characters do actually repeat in books. There are three books in the series that are all about the same couples. A lot of these books are about uh, two motorcycle partners in this motorcycle club, like they're partners in the motorcycle club, and a lot of the guys in this club like to share everything, including women. So that's why they're MFM books. <laughs> and I do want to reiterate, the series will not be revisited by Ruby. She said she's never going to write in this series again. Um, the first book in the series is Off Limits. This one's about Lucky and Solo. This is a forbidden romance because she is the younger sister to the president of the motorcycle club, which is like a no-no in Solo's eyes. This one does have a paperback version. Packing Double is book number two. This is about the two motorcycle club presidents for this club and their romance with Kitty. They love to share everything, including this woman, Kitty, that they meet at a bar. And for this one, there is also a paperback copy. The next three books in the series are all about the same three people. <laughs> so uh, Double Trouble is book number three. This is about Shy, Muscle, and Beast. It is an MFM book. There is a paperback copy of this one. Book number four, Double Down, is about those same three people. So is book number five, which is Double or Nothing. The last two books about them, uh, Double Down and Double or Nothing, don't have physical copies, by the way, so you can only read them on KU. Then book number six is Slow Ride, which is about Lucky and Solo again, which is the couple from book one. And then the last book in the series is Double Dare You, which is the only MMF book Ruby has written. Um, so Becca, Epic, and Locke. Um, Epic and Locke are new motorcycle club partners and they end up saving Becca from a like human trafficking situation and end up staying in this secluded cabin, cabin, cabin for a while and the two guys are forced to admit the feelings that they have for each other and for Becca. For my top three favorite books, Double Dare You, the one I just mentioned the last book, is definitely probably my favorite book in that series. Then Double Trouble and Double or Nothing, which is an uh, both books are about the three people in the MFN couple. And that's like the first book apart about them and then the last book about them. Um, this series isn't my favorite by Ruby. I don't think any of them got over 3.5 or four stars. I think the last book was the only book I gave four stars to, um, but they're fun. They're fun, they're very low key like very low key motorcycle club romance books. And then the last series that I have to mention before I get into Ruby's standalones is the Bear Bites series, which is her bear shifter paranormal romance series. These are five novellas about uh, these bear shifter guys finding their faded mates. All can be found in a bind up called Shift, um, which is on Amazon and is an audiobook called Shift. I listen to them all on audio. So it's basically like an anthology you can all listen to them and there is also like a paperback copy of the bind up you cannot buy these books individually this is probably my least favorite series ruby has written um i didn't really love a lot of these books i only loved one of them um the other books in the series aren't necessarily my favorite they're way too insta lovey for me but they are fun quick read this is another series that ruby will not be revisiting this series is done she will not come back to it book number one of the series is shift out of luck <laughs> this one is about adelaide and cole and this is about a couple who has been pining after each other for quite some time. Also, this series takes place in this bear shifter town where a lot of like bear shifters go to, but some humans don't know that there are bear shifters there and some humans do, okay? You don't you don't really know. Book number two is Get Your Shift Together. This one's about Leo and Caro. This one's my least favorite one in the series because like you read about in like chapter one, she wants to go on vacation with her boyfriend to this bear town, not knowing it's about bear shifters, not knowing bear shifters live there and that they exist. And her boyfriend breaks up with her. And uh, the hero in here basically saves her from camping all by herself in like the wilderness. And the whole time she's talking about her, her boyfriend. <laughs> Not my favorite. Book number three is Shift Just Got Real. This one's about Ryan and Mal. This is an age gap romance. Book number four is Does a Bear Shift in the Woods? This one's about Madison and Chance. This is a bear shifter and a wolf shifter romance. She's a wolf shifter. Book number five is You Gotta Be Shifting Me. Um, this one actually also does not have a Goodreads page. So my review for this one 
is in like the main bind up listing on Goodreads of Shift um, because this book is only included in the bind up. It's not available like individually on KU whatsoever. So this one's about Griffin and Alexa and this is an enemies to lovers romance. The only book that I liked in this series is Shift Just Got Real, which is the age gap one. I really love that one. All the other ones I don't really remember at all because they just weren't memorable to me. They were three stars or lower, unfortunately. Um, so this isn't my favorite Ruby series. But if you want to read about insta levy bear shifters, check those books out. Next, we're going to be getting into Ruby's standalone novels. Uh, the first one is one I actually haven't read yet because it's not on Kindle Unlimited. Um, it's on the Yonder app. <laughs> okay, so the book is called Bound to the Shadow Prince. It does not have a Goodreads page yet. I don't know why it doesn't. It's already completed. Anyway, it's on this app called Yonder. I don't really know a lot about it. It's like one of those apps that you read like chapters of every day or something. The book is already complete, but you only get like one unlock pass a day for one chapter. And so like, it would take me like a year to read this book because I would have to either buy a bunch of coins to unlock these chapters. It's very strange. I don't even really know what it's about other than it's enemies to lovers because it doesn't have an Amazon page. It doesn't have a Goodreads page. I don't know what the summary is. Um, but it looks good and I want to read it, but it's on this app that I don't vibe with. <laughs> so like I haven't even started, I think I tried reading chapter one and I just got very frustrated with the format of this app and I gave up. So <laughs> I don't think Ruby said like I'm on her Facebook page and um, like we're part of her Facebook group and she said she's not going to put it on KU because so many people have asked because like she wants to try out this app and I'm like, girl, it's not working for me so i want to read all of ruby's books but i just have to figure out how to read this one without it making me a little bit upset <laughs> um because it looks so good the cover looks so good one of ruby's other standalone novels is the alien assassin's convenient wife this is available on kindle unlimited and there's a paperback copy this one's about jad zion and he goes to earth for like a secret undercover mission he's like this alien spy or something and he uses a dating app to find uh, a wife. He needs a wife to get into this certain situation on earth and so then he finds Jenna who's on the app. This one can be read with Michelle Mills books that's like in the same like author contribution contri contribution series. All of them are about like alien romances. Um, so Michelle Mills book in this series, The Alien Assassin Stolen Bride, the heroes in both of those books are brothers. That's like the only similarity in here is that they're brothers. So. Another standalone by Ruby is Beauty and Autumn. This is on Kindle Unlimited. It's a part of a uh, of the Beauty series, which again, books by Alexa Riley, Ella Good, Katie Wilde. Like they write a lot of books in the same like companion series, but they have nothing to do with each other. These are all Beauty and the Beast retelling books and they all involve like a certain season. So this is Beauty and Autumn. So it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling dealing with autumn time and stuff. Willow lives in this village where once a year a woman is picked to be the bride to the beast and women are like terrified that they're gonna be chosen, but Willow ends up having dreams about him and is actually excited to be picked and know she's gonna be picked to be the beast's bride. Books I have not read yet by Ruby. The two books I haven't read yet are Bethia, um, because I'm waiting for the audiobook for that one and uh, Bound to the Shadow Prince because of the format just not vibing well with me but I want to read it okay then we're going to talk about her up and coming releases so uh first one that I know we have like a set release date for is actually an anthology this is the Pride and Prejudice anthology um this comes out on June 6th of 2023 and there's 21 stories by 21 different authors um and it's like an anthology which looks really cool I've learned all this information from Ruby's website and her Facebook group and her uh, newsletter that she writes I really recommend signing up for her newsletter also her like website information is going to be linked down below too so you can sign up for it the newsletter there if you're not signed up already um but she's currently working on Servant to the Spy Day which is a part of um the fantasy romance series. You met these characters in the Aspect and Anchor series. You've met these characters. It's about Yelena and the Spy Day. So um, they're like three spider fate creatures. So I think this is MMMF possibly, or it's MFMM. -M. I don't know if the guys are all together. I don't know. Um, so she's currently working on that. And then she's also wanting to write other books in the series about uh, the Conmac. Ragos's, which is like Hades's dark brother, uh, the God of Diseases book. And she says there's a lot of characters that she wants to play with when this series. So she's not done with that series. Um, then she wants to write more books in the Ice Planet clone series. So the first book in that series was Arjal's Resonance. So 
more books that takes place on Not Hoth. Another book that's in the works is The Sea Ogre's Eager Bride, which I believe is also a part of this series. She wants to write more books in the Rizdiverse series for sure. And then we know that a second gen IPB book series will be out at some point in the future, like she's hinted at that. And then hopefully we'll also get a second gen series to um, these books, the Fireblood Dragon books, because I would love that. I have a bunch of links down below. Um, if you want to go check some things out, I have Ruby's Facebook group, my Instagram, where you can look at all the IPP graphics that I've made, like the reading order. I have my IPP deep dive video and Ruby's Instagram and her website. When it comes to my favorite books by Ruby, I definitely love Barbarian's Redemption. That one's in a stack over there, so I'm not gonna go get it. Um, that one's probably my favorite IPB book. I think this one's my favorite Ruby book ever, so I love this one. Same with this one though, I love this novella so much. I don't know, I have so many Ruby books. Like, don't ask me to pick my favorite, 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 because like picking your favorite child. Anyway, that was a very long video. Um, let me know down below what your favorite Ruby book is, if you read all of them as well, or which books you have read by Ruby and which ones you enjoyed. Also, let me know if you're interested in any of these books. I would love to know. And yeah, thank y'all so, so much for watching this video. I know it's very long, but thanks for sticking in there. Let me know if you would love to see other deep dive author videos like this one. If you want to watch the other one that I've made, I've actually made a Talia Hibbert deep dive video, and you can check that one out down below as well. Anyways. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.